Hey everybody. So today we're making a playing card case. Um, it's been requested for a long time. Uh, we do have game nights uh, at the shop every couple weeks, so you know it'll be nice to have around. What I have designed is it's a very simple pattern, kind of, but we're gonna kind of semi wet mold things, and then I'm also building it almost like I've been kind of inspired by the projects we've done in the last couple weeks. So um, the tool holder the edge paint, we're gonna build this like you would buy it at like Home Depot, right? So it's gonna be a little more industrial looking. Um, I just kinda like that style and thought it would be interesting to do. So first thing, the pattern will be available in the description for a couple bucks, but there's gonna be no instructions. The video is gonna be the instructions because we're wet molding, so everything's gonna be a little bit, um, when you wet mold, things are a little more by feel than by measurement. So we'll do everything in this video, walk you through it, and you can make along if you grab the pattern. So we have our pattern cut out. I have some five ounce leather here. Now this pattern is for a standard deck of cards. I know that the playing card niche is gigantic. I honestly don't know much about them. So if there's like collector's editions or special edition cards where the boxes are different sizes, this won't, it might work a little, it, there's gonna be a little extra wiggle room so you can get this in and out. But we just kind of went and grabbed the traditional bicycle cards. Um, so. I'm making it so it fits with the cellophane on, so that when you take the cellophane on, you op off, you open up the pack. You have a little bit of room to, you know, take it in and out, um, but that's just a disclaimer. So five ounce leather, we're gonna get this traced out and cut. So for this piece, which is the main body piece, we have a lot of little cuts here, which we're gonna fold up. So you've seen me do this before. I'm gonna make some relief punches with my hole punch. I have my rotary hole puncher sent to the smallest hole that I can. If I had a smaller one, I would use it. You don't need a big hole for this. But this is just to prevent ripping in the future since we're gonna be cutting into the leather but not all the way through. So I'm just gonna, before I make any cuts, I'm gonna make my hole punches and I'm also gonna punch for rivets, which will be in the pattern. They're not in the pattern I'm using right now because I just haven't put them in yet. But in the pattern in the description, the holes will all be there for you. So once we have all of our holes punched, I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna use those holes as my starting position for my straight cuts. So I'm gonna go down just like that on both sides. And then what that allows me to do is to get this cut so I'm not cutting straight into our flap here, I can just fold that up and make my cuts. And we're gonna be trimming this, so this doesn't have to be perfect. Um, this is really the first pattern where um, you're gonna be doing, a, that I've released, where, or that we've released, where you're gonna have to do a little bit more trimming than normal because we're gonna be wet molding and stuff, but we figured why not give it a go. So this is our finished pattern for now. Oh, I have to punch out the hole for our snap button. There we go. Now we need to get to, oh, we have one more step before we wet mold. So here's the sample that I made, the final sample of this pattern. And these pieces are these little flaps, right? So you can see it's kind of a semi wet molded project. We're gonna just dampen it and get this nice fold so that when you take the pack of cards out, it sits nice and flat, but we have all of the dimension that we need to easily slide the card pot, the, the pack of cards in. I like this little detail, we're gonna do rivets. I'm actually gonna add more rivets to this one, make it look a little more industrial, I guess. I don't think, I don't know if that's the right word, but. Um, so we're gonna, this center flaps here are, are the flaps that are gonna be riveted. You can keep them straight, they're straight in the pattern. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my three quarter inch strap end punch and a wildly oversized mallet because I don't know where my small one is. Um, I'm gonna fold everything up and I'm gonna round these off. Just because I think it looks a little nicer with the round rivets. I didn't want to put this in the pattern because it's nice to have options, you know. Um, this would look great with straight, just straight cut as well. And 
if it was rounded in the pattern, it'd be a real pain in the butt to just cut. So I would suggest if you're going to do this, make sure you're using a strap and punch. It just makes it, the whole process much easier. Okay, so this is Eric here. I have the camera. Kaylina gave me, this is our very dirty shop sink with all covered in um, dye and stuff that we need to calm it out every couple months. But instead of totally wet molding, all I'm going to do, turn the water on. I'm just going to run this under like this. I'm not looking to get it wet all the way through the back. If you get a little bit, that's fine. We don't need it to be fully saturated for this because we're only making a few bends, all right? So let's head back to the bench. So once we have our leather wet, we're going to make a bunch of folds. The first thing we're going to do is fold our base up. And then we're going to make a little almost Z. And we're going to do that with both sides too. But we have our cuts to dictate where we're going. This one's a little more of a freestyle fold here. And <clears throat> this will probably change a little bit as we continue to fold. The next fold we're going to make is we're going to fold from the inside of this. We're going to fold that in. And do that on both sides. And this is why we don't need to fully wet mold this. Um, <clears throat> because we're not doing any curves, we're not using a bone fold or anything, we're just folding. But I guess you should, theoretically could do this without wetting the leather at all, but it makes it a lot nicer finished product, if you do. So, you can already start to see that we're getting the shape of our playing card deck in our wet molding. So this is gonna slide right in. This is going to be folded down like that. And you can use a playing card deck to kind of get, don't worry about, we're trimming all this off. So it's going to look a lot, this is one of those projects, I say this a lot, it's going to look really bad before it looks good. You just got to trust the process. So you can see with our playing card deck in here, now we have pretty much the perfect shape. The next step is we're going to take our flaps and you can, you could cut these flaps off and just stitch this up if you wanted to. I like the flaps with the rivets. I think it's a nice extra detail. We're going to fold these over like this and we're going to rivet them. But first, I'm going to try to give these a little bit of a burnish. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, but let's give it a try. Um, it'll just make the finished product a little bit nicer. And then the other thing we have to remember is we want to fold this in a way that when this is all glued together, our stitch line is going to go down and over. And we want this seam to be nice and straight because we want to butt that up so that you barely see it. Because we're going to be stitching right over that. So just keep that in mind. At this step, you have, you're gonna have plenty of opportunity to smooth this out because this is gonna take like an hour or two to dry. Um, but we need to get these rivets in before it does dry. So I'm gonna burnish this and then we're gonna get this riveted. Then we'll have a little bit of a break while this piece dries before we glue it to our backing piece with our flap. Okay, so instead of using double cap rivets, which are rivets that have a cap on either side, right? So they look finished on either side. The problem with these is they leave a little bit of a bump. And I know some people have collector's packs of cards that they don't want any dents in. So I'm using flat, um, I think, uh, single cap rivets. That's what they're called, single cap rivets. So that the inside will be completely flat. So that when the pack sits against, to it, against it, I don't know, I'm just trying to make something that um, enthusiasts will be super into. Uh, you can use double caps if you're just putting a pair of bicycle cards in there. Um, but just to be safe, for this design, I would, I'm just going to go with the, with the single caps on the inside. And there we go. So now everything is a little bit wonky, so I'm going to show you how we're going to set this up to get it to dry. So as you can see, we're already starting to dry in the top. Um, to get this to dry in the right shape, all I'm going to do is I'm going to bend this in a little too far. Right, then I'm gonna use my bicycle pack, and of course, if you're mass producing these, which you're totally allowed to do with, with our patterns, um, you would wanna make a bunch of templates, like, like me, uh, wooden templates for this. But we're just making one, so I'm gonna take my pack of cards. I've bent this in too much so that when I put it around the bicycle card, or the playing cards, you can see it's gonna hug the sides. That's how I want this to dry. I'm gonna smooth everything out and I'm specifically gonna pay attention to this seam because remember, we, wanna, we want this to be seamless when we sew it. There can be a little bit of a gap. That's no big deal because all we have to do is that and that's it. And then the next step, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in a little sunny spot. You can also put this in front of a fan um, to speed it up 
it has no negative effects and we didn't really soak it all the way through so it's going to be a pretty quick drying project you could get this all done in a day you don't have to wait overnight for it to dry so what i'm just going to do is put this in the sun and then we're going to wait for it to dry okay so this is all dry and what i've done is i've gone ahead and just done the edge paint we're edge painting this one i'm still on my edge paint kick and I've also edge painted, um, I'm gonna have to, I had to do this by hand because it's too, we're gonna use that roller thing that we used in the last video. Um, but this is a little too tight to get in there. So I just edge painted that while I was waiting for this to dry. So the next step is I'm gonna lay this out on my cutting board. And unlike most of our patterns, because this is wet molded, this is gonna be a little bit different for everybody. So I'm gonna lay this out and mark my glue line. Now I'm gonna want to have some hangover here so that I can trim it, a little trim allowance. So I'm just gonna mark, and I'm gonna use the guide on my cutting board, the lines, to make sure that we're even as this is lined up. Now we're gonna glue here, and we're gonna glue all this stuff and get this all stuck together. So to glue this in, I'm going to take the shortest section. You can see how this has a curve to it. I'm going to take the shortest section of this and line it up. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm getting about half of each of the sides stuck. Because we're going to trim some of that off, but we want to have most of it on there. So we'll go there, and then I'm going to come to this end and pop that down right there. Now the important thing, remember, we want these corners smushed in, or this seam here, smushed in as much as we can because we want that to look really nice when it's all sewn together. And you can see we have a fairly even amount that we're going to trim on each side. Now I'm going to go in with my bone folder and just get this stuck down. And for a little added reassurance, what we can do is we can bring our granite block over and give it a little tap because we have a, enough room. And really focus right here on this corner. So trimming can be tricky. Make sure you have a very sharp blade. A dull blade is much more dangerous than a sharp blade. First, I'm going to do the sides. I'm just going to trim these using the corner of my cutting board here, or my pounding board here. That'll get us a nice even edge, like that. And we'll do it on this side as well. And you'll notice that there is a pretty big sort of border, and that's because I want to add some pop rivets just for aesthetics. You can feel free to trim this down more and trim the whole thing if you want. Whatever you, you want to do with your version of this project. I'm going to take my ruler, I'm going to line up my edge, this edge, with my cutting board grid, and I'm going to put that, line that up with a line right here, and I'm going to cut it. Um, I'm going to put my ruler like this on the top and you want to go slow with this and make sure you know where your hands are because you could cut yourself easily doing this. And I'm not going to press hard, I'm just going to do a bunch of little passes to get this cut made. There we go. And so you see we have a lot of unevenness on this little piece here, so by doing like, like that it just makes sure that we get a nice square cut and our whole case is now nice and square. So we're ready to punch holes for rivets and our stitching. So spacing your stitch line using your calipers, dividers, whatever, is gonna be a little unique for this piece because we want our stitch line to land basically from where this bend ends to the edge, we want it right in the middle. So it's gonna be different depending on what kind of leather, the thickness of leather, your wet molding, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my calipers and I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to adjust it until I get to the center where I think I want my stitch line. I'm not going to go all the way to the end because I'm going to have a rivet right here. So I'm going to start right about where I think I want my rivet. 
and I'm going to pull down to make my first stitch line. Then I'm going to come to the bottom and I'm going to go for my second stitch line. Then I'm going to go on this side for my third stitch line. And again, I'm going to end right about where I think I want my rivet. Now, before we start punching, we need to punch our holes for our rivets. Because if we, if we stitch and then punch our holes, we can punch right through our thread. So, for the rivets I'm using, I'm going to go down to the second smallest hole in my rotary puncher. This says five. I think it would be like about an eighth of an inch. Depends on your pop. I'm, we're using pop rivets for this. And I'm going to punch my holes for my pop rivets a little off center. And I'm going to go two at the top and two on the bottom. You can skip this. I just want to make it look really kind of uh, almost industrial, like something you would buy at like Home Depot instead of, like I said, I've just kind of been thinking about how cool that uh, the aesthetics of that tool pouch we made were. And so I just want to make a kind of super overbuilt card case just for fun. And now that we have our holes punched, we can go through and get our stitching holes done. For our stitching, it's pretty simple. Instead of hanging our first prong over the top, we're just going to hang it from the hole that we punched for our rivets. And we're just going to punch all the way down. Well, and around. So I'm going to use some yellow Ritza Tiger thread. This is 0.6 millimeters with our 5 millimeter stitching iron spacing. That's what I like to use. And I'm using the yellow because, um, you know, Louis Vuitton, we're going to paint the edges. We've done a bunch of Louis Vuitton projects. They use the yellow thread, but it's just a nice classic sort of um, utilitarian workwear look. Um, they use a lot of yellow thread in construction holsters and that kind of thing. Um, so I figured it'd be nice to pair it with this, but of course you could do it with any color thread you like. So you can see that I'm just using this first rivet hole that we punched as a stitching hole and I'm just going to do that all the way around. And like I said, the reason for that is so that when we go back and install our rivets after we're stitched, we don't have to punch holes in our stitching and risk punching through the stitching. And it also will, if we were to just rivet and then stitch around it, um, this, the rivets, I like, I don't think it's a big deal, but I like when you can kind of lock in some of the corner stitching with the rivets. It just seems like if you can add strength, you might as well do it. So I got more of the little tiny rivets, but this time in brass. So all we're going to do is we're going to pop these in. All four corners here. And then we'll go over to the little wonder press and we'll get those all stuck together. And then we will have a wildly overbuilt, but super cool looking little playing card case. So we are going to do some edge paint because we're really going for like 90s gas station gift, stop, gift shop vibes on this one. But um, first I want to round these little corners to match the shape of the, the rivet. And how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to use, I'm going to trim a little bit with my knife and then I'm going to do the rest with the sandpaper. Just so we can really get that perfect. Um, it's kind of too small to to do just by making a single cut. <sighs> Alright, so we're gonna, <clears throat> I promise I'm not gonna edge paint everything all the time now, but I have been loving using this thing, so we're gonna um, give it a go to try on a pretty much finished piece. Let's put our trust in it, see what happens. So this is an edge paint roller. It's basically a little wheel 
you fill the reservoir with edge paint, you set the card scraper to scrape, scrape off the excess so you're not getting too much. Um, this is just a little leather scrap. We can use this to test and make sure that we are getting just enough and the scraper is doing its job. Should be good. So, the nerve wracking part. So we have our first coat dry, it uh, came out pretty good. I did have a little mishap here, but we're good. Um, I sanded it down, now we're gonna do our second coat. This way. So we have our edges all painted, and before we install our final snap, and I'm going to show you how to do that, um, I figured it'd be fun to play around. I want this to look old. So I'm going to take a little bit of sandpaper, and I'm just going to sand down, being careful of the stitching, of course, I'm just going to sand down where some of the high stress points would be. And then we're gonna go in and oil it. So remember, this would be folded like this. So we would have a bunch of aging here. And this isn't, we're not gonna go crazy with it. I'm not trying to, this is just a little fun experiment. And then maybe we'll do a little bit here. And once we're done with that, now we're gonna take our mink oil and get some color on this thing. Now I don't, have time to stick it out in the sun, but you can stick it out in the sun too if you're just using natural veg tan and that'll give you a nice dark patina basically right from the start because veg tan tans like human skin does. So first we're going to hit it with some mink oil. everywhere. And you can see the sanding is not going to do much. I'm not taking away all the grain or anything. I just want to bring it, just add a little bit of detail to make it look like this was something that someone found in a drawer somewhere that someone else bought 30 or 40 years ago and used a bunch and now we're reusing it. that can be fun. It's always nice to make brand new shiny goods, but I've always liked to make things look a little bit old sometimes. It's still going to get dark, but you're going to see it's going to look like it has some good age to it. And then I can go back and I can say, okay, well, this isn't exactly looking like I want it to because it looks a little too new. So we can go in and we can sand a little bit more in specific spots. And then we can add a little more of our mink oil here, really get that saturated in. Because remember, we're not trying to degrade the leather at all. Just trying to add a little age to it. And now we're gonna install our snaps before we give it a final coat of our leather conditioner. So I've installed our uh, female part of the snap, snap top. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to slide my deck of cards in. I'm gonna fold this over nice and tight. And I'm just gonna press this down like that. That'll give us a rough estimate of where we want to install our bottom snap. Now, this snap will be in the pattern, but I'm not sure how thick everyone's going to make this out of, so you might want to omit this and do this later. You do need a special anvil for it, which I will show you in a second. Then, I have roughly where I want it. I'm going to basically just bring this ruler in. It actually came out perfectly centered, so I'll put my hole right there. 
I'm going to take a little piece of belt scrap. This is very thick leather. I'm going to put that right in the middle so that I can punch this hole. And you want to go slow with it because you do not want to punch all the way through your case. And look, we're fine. Then this is where the cobbler's anvil comes in. So what this does, this is an anvil. I think I'm going to be using this side that you can slide this into, and then you have an anvil surface on the inside of your piece to set your snap. Like that. I'm gonna put my other piece on there, and then I'm just gonna use a hand setting tool to set this. So the last aging step, this is a little secret that I have. This is gum drag. You don't just have to use gum drag for your edges. You can rub it all over the actual piece itself. That might have been a little too much, but we'll go on the front too. And what we can do is to give that burnish, um, basically when you see patina on a wallet that's been used for 20 years or whatever, what you're getting is you're getting the grain of the leather actually burnishing. So we can sort of mimic that if we take some gum drag, and it's just kind of like you're doing your edges. You want to let it get kind of sticky. You don't want it totally super wet. We take a cloth, and we just essentially burnish the face of our leather piece. And here we go, here's our final piece, and you can see our aging came out really well. Now this is wet, so it'll dry up a bit, but you can see that by doing all of that burnishing and stuff, we get a lot of the, um, the patina starts to form on all the wet molding, and even where we sanded it, you see we're not sanding fully through anything or anything like that, we're just adding a little bit of texture. So the thing that I like to do is I left the cellophane on just to give us a little bit of extra space while we're wet molding. So we'll take that off and our cards will slide perfectly in. And we close our case and we're good to go. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.